Okay, welcome to Bohanam Guttas and Ukuleles. Today I'm going to be uh, spraying this guitar, uh, this ukulele gold. Um, this is the uke that this neck is going on it, and this is the neck that I shot for gluing the fingerboard on. Uh, and that's Alaskan yellow cedar. So I've sanded all this to 320 and then just a quick scuff with 400 but really th um, sort of 220, 320 uh, and it is ready to spray. Um, what I did, so this is, you can't see it here, oh, you can. Um, this is just plain maple. Uh, so what I did was I sprayed Cardinal Sealer Filler on it and uh, I didn't have to pour fill it and uh, then I sprayed a couple of coats of clear lacquer on it then just sanded it all nice and flat so it's perfect um, and then taped off the bindings with uh, blue vinyl tape and then I isolated just the back because I'm going to do this in three parts the back, uh, I don't know, the sides probably, and then the top, um, because doing it all at once, uh, it just, I presume it's three times as hard and three times as more likely to go wrong, or f for something to go wrong. And so if you do it in three parts, you've only got, uh, you know, one third of the work to do if it screws up. Um, this is the gold colour that I'm using, Antique Gold, by Stu Mac, Aerosol. Um, I didn't want to get into the whole problem of putting metallic flakes or dust in my spray gun, even if I had a dedicated hard freight spray gun, just a cheap one. Um, so this is just going to be... Um, this is just the easiest way to spray metallic. This is the first time I've sprayed metallic and uh, the only other time I've sprayed it actually was on the inside of this uke. Um, before I glued the top on I sprayed the inside because um, it's got a, a side sound port and uh, I just wanted it to be all gold. Um, this is actually kind of a special instrument. It's my 100th instrument. And uh, so I thought, why not do something different? Um, some people go all out with Brazilian rosewood and inlays and stuff. And I'm going actually really simple. It just happens to be a gold instrument. So it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one. And it will certainly stand out, and it's got a, um, a gold label or a, a label written in gold ink. So I've got my can in some boiling water. Well, I boiled some water and then uh, let it cool down for a bit, and then I poured it in my um, high glue pot. Um, and then I've just been keeping it warm, not a full boiling, obviously, because I don't want the thing to explode. Um, but uh, uh, this, I just put this on for about two minutes just to keep the water a little bit warm. So it's, you know, I can keep my finger in there, it's fine. Um, might be like 100 degrees or something, I don't know. But you do have to warm up cans before you spray and you obviously have to shake the shake them a lot I was going to swear but I won't um, I was going to do some rude things but I won't because I am a professional so I'm going to just Turn the camera off and just shake this can for you know five minutes. I'm gonna walk around the house and uh, then I will show you me spraying this thing and hopefully not screwing it up.
So I'm just starting to put the vinyl tape on the perflink. Um, don't go right up to the edge. Um, so you can see I'm not going right up to the spruce. I'm sort of leaving the computing it around the edge of the white um, because you naturally get a little lip right on the edge and so if you tape right to the edge you're going to have uh, that lip right on the edge where you can't remove it anymore so if you go back a little bit, like I'm doing, then um, you can, when you scrape, you will also remove that raised lip from the spray. It's like some kind of vortex thing from the spray. I don't pretend to understand vortexes but so the you know don't think that you are going to not have to scrape even if you're laying down tape that isn't the way the world works. And I got all this vinyl tape. Uh, I think it was on Amazon. It was like ten dollars for all these, and that, you know that's like one mil thick or something. Really good for rosettes. Um, I think that's it. On to spraying. Okay, so I'm in my garage because I don't want to I don't want to spray outdoors because of all the cottonwood flying around and all that. And uh, got my glove on and my respirator, and I'm just going to spray the back. Um, very light passes. So I'm going to put this on, can't talk. So you can see that's blotchy, but it's the first coat, and I'd much rather that than, um, than you know, a heavy coat that runs or the gold looks weird. So I'm just going to leave that and uh, come back. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll see what I might do. a bit of a test there so I can touch that and know when to come back in on this. It's probably ready to for another coat already but I'm just going to leave it for 10 minutes or so. Pray that doesn't fall over. And like always with uh, a spray can, 
after you invert it and then spray it. To clear the nozzle. Um, so I just read the can and you've got to wait an hour between coats. I think that's a really thin coat, uh, but I mean, I'm just going to wait an hour because it doesn't matter. So I'll just leave this here and let uh, this run and you can watch that for an hour. <laughs> Time lapse. Okay, so it's an hour later and just warmed up the shaker again. And ready to go for a second coat. I'm going to try and hit the, uh, the thinner spots first. Well, I'm going to not hit them first, but I'm going to concentrate on them a bit. So that looks pretty even. There are lines here. So I'm going to leave it for another hour and then do another coat and also I can pick off these little blobs. I might have to sort of more pop them with the scalpel or something, I'm not sure. But uh, we shall see now. Okay, third and final coat. Um, I managed to push down the little dots. Uh, they just push down with a little um, awl um, or scalpel blade. Um, this, there's a few lines which are still visible, it's just a little dry um, and I can still see a grain line going this way in a couple of places. So, third and should be final coat.
Okay. That looks good and as even as I can get it. I can still see lines, but I think with the spray can, it's about as good as I'm going to get. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to disappear totally under clear coats, but uh, we'll see. In. An hour. Okay, so an hour's passed. Um, I'm just going to take this masking off because I have to get to, or I have to remove this top layer of um, masking. Because if I, I can spray clear directly over this, but um, it's just going to be another layer that I have to deal with. And by layer I mean it's going to be another, I don't want to create a large ledge of the gold. Now this black is a little bit uneven so I'll uh, come back after I spray and uh, um, come in with one of these and just clean it up but for now I'm just going to give it a coat of clear over that. I have to do it inside because it's still windy outside. kind of did a couple of drier coats and then went a little bit wetter um, but that looks really good to me okay so here we are the next day and I'm just gonna scrape a tiny bit of this gold um, if I zoom in, you'd be able to see what I'm talking about. So the black is good enough here, and it just gets touch thin just here, and some various other places. So just have to do this very carefully because if I screw it up, um, it's an entire respray. So you mark the uh, or gauge the depth that you want to do by you know, moving your fingers like this. Um, And that's assuming that the width of the binding is the same. <laughs> or rather, that the purfling is the same distance away from the edge.
and use a new razor blade. Sometimes these work a bit better, and sometimes these do, it just depends on the job. And I buy these in boxes of a hundred. Sometimes I've got oil on them, so on the new ones, so get rid of that. So this is um, what you do every time you spray anything but clear, um, even if you mask off. Uh, I diligently mark off or mask the, uh, the areas that I don't want, but that just, I think it's impossible to do a perfect job of masking. So with a um, sunbursts, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, it's just always necessary to scrape. So don't think you've <laughs> screwed up or anything. It's not at all that. So you can see what I just did then, um, I'm not going to film the rest of it, it's just more of the same. Um, there is a tiny, tiny lip here uh, where, the, where the tape was and then when you spray the clear up against it or even over it, um, there is a bit of a build up. Um, and I'll probably get some like 600 or 800 and just very 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 lightly just brush that little lip down um, but other than that I will show you the rest when I do it so when I sprayed the sides um, it all went well but I just noticed that there was a, a little bit of um, residue from the tape when I taped off the the top or back I don't know which side's which <laughs> um, actually it must be the back uh, so I just scraped that little bit of residue away I forgot to take a photo of it but it was residue looking and it was just sort of like gummy um, and uh, so I'll just give that a quick spot and then you can see you can see the grain lines in here so this is just the first coat of gold so this is you know 
this is always going to get two or maybe three more coats on. But this side looks pretty good. Still a tiny, tiny bit of grain line coming through here. Actually, if like if the end result is like somebody in the direct sun can see a tiny bit of grain line, I'm not concerned at all. Um, because just because. <laughs> so I will uh, do one last or couple of more coats on the sides, and then it's all done. So another tip I have for you is after each coat and you clean the nozzle, just put it in a little bit of, uh, take the nozzle off, or whatever you call this little thing, and uh, put it in some lacquer thinners. And then expertly get it out. And that just, Every man should have a clean nozzle. Then dry it on your favorite shirt. So, another tip is holding the can a bit further away, um, it, it minimizes those lines that I um, was getting but remedied. Uh, so here we go. I'm just going to do a quick little touch up of this and then fill in the thinner parts. So the can was doing this yesterday, kind of nothing comes out, but there's still a lot of gas and fluid in there. I can't figure out why. I just took the nozzle off, put it back on, now it works, so, I don't know. It's the joys of aerosol.
So this is enough for me to not use this fucking can again. So, that looks good to me. So I think we're done. Um, that can sort of failing halfway through a, like a coat like that really pisses me off. Um, it's probably so I don't think it was the this part. I think it was probably build up of the metallic elements inside. Um, I don't know how you remedy that. You just have to sort of just keep trying to push it out and let the the uh, the pressure from the aerosol deal with it. But I think the next gold instrument that I do, if I ever do one, this is my first one in almost 20 years, um, if I ever do another one I'll probably buy um, like the flakes or the, the metallic dust and uh, just buy a dedicated spray gun from Harbour Freight for you know 15 bucks. Um, although you know when these work, they actually work really good. And this is how it is now, is about as good as I could ever hope for off uh, a gun. It's actually really nice and flat. Yeah, so the, it's really good. It's just the, you know, the inherent problems with an aerosol. Um, I don't know how that's remedied. And that actually happens with, uh, any aerosol that I've used. A friend of mine was using some Stu Mac, I think it was, aerosols, and it was like the sanding sealer and clear coats, and they kind of did the same thing. Um, but if you get it on, then the end result's the same. And definitely worth a try. Yeah, so that's, uh, well, I'll do another video once this is all um, taken off uh, and you can see the end result of the whole thing. It looks cool. So everything sprayed. So I just wanted to show you how I take this off. some simple brown paper and I, I uh, didn't use any more of the blue vinyl tape I just uh, put the or used normal masking tape cheap masking tape just to um, mask off this area so from here then we
take this off. And this has a, uh, a coat of clear over the top. The reveal is always nice. So this will need um, some scraping back a little bit. So the black here is a little bit thicker than here um, and there and there's kind of almost no black up there so just just with a nice new sharp blade I'll just go and scrape all that I won't bother showing that it's just the same as the scraping I showed before but uh, you get the idea okay for my last trick to show you how I scrape the butt strip, end graft, as we call it. So I've done this side, and now to this side. And that's done. So that turned out good. All the bindings are scraped. back has been scuffed with a bit of scotch bright so it's, it doesn't look quite as shiny but once I put a clear coat on it it will and the top with the gold mother of pearl rosette I haven't done a simple um, shell rosette like that in I don't know, ages, like five years or something it seems. Um, I've forgotten how nice it is to <laughs> do, a, do a simple rosette. Anyway, so that is all I've really got to show. I might just come in a little bit more and just widen up these blacks a little bit. I widen up these blacks I mean scrape away a little tiny bit more gold um, if I was going to do this again so because under this is maple if I scrape into it or scrape a little bit too far um, it's it's only maple and it doesn't actually show um, I did it like just a slither of it and and even I can't really see it so and I'm pretty picky uh, but I th what the probably the best thing to do is to do like a, this is a 20 thou black I would do a 30 thou black um, and then just scrape away like a 20 thou um, I think that would be safest in the future. Um, but anyway, I hope that was of interest. This turned out really cool. This is my 100th instrument, if I didn't mention that before. I can't remember. 
Um, and this is the neck for it. So, pretty interesting. And I haven't decided what to do with the headstock yet. But I've got something in mind. Anyway, thank you. Cheers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever. Bye. So I'm just sanding back after the first day of clear coats. Um, I just wanted to show you what I do with the lip. Um, so the lip, what I call the lip anyway, it's the transition from the gold to the not gold. Um, the gold has a tiny bit of build up. Well, the gold is the tiny bit of build up. Uh, and then it drops down. So you have this scenario exaggerated. This is the gold. And then this is, you know, where the kind of purpling start. Black, white, black. And then binding. So, this is a little bit unclear. We'll, we'll call this gold plus clear. So, just to minimize this, I'm just sanding this part away so it's kind of like that. If that makes sense. So you can see that I've done it here just around the edges. And I'm just using 320 and you know you're just knocking it back. You obviously don't want to go through because then it's a complete redo. Um, so I did the same around the sides and the back. I also gave the back a once over, and which I'll do with the top as well. You can see, you can see there, and I'll do this with every like every day I do this. <clears throat> and today, as I did yesterday. I did give this area, or the binding area, a, just a little bit more. Um, so I could probably knock this right down, but I don't want to sand through, so I'm just taking it really carefully. And I'll do the same to the rosette. I can't really do it while I'm holding. And then when I'm spraying clear, I'll just give that another, you know, once over. And, uh, yeah, it'll all be filled. But uh, the important thing is, you know, on a finished instrument, you don't want this ledge. It just looks really crappy. Um, but it's easy to fix. It's not fix, it's just like, you just, you know it's going to happen and you just work on it until it's gone. Um, unless you gibs it and you just leave it there lazy bastards. Um, anyway, cheers. Okay, so this is the second day and this will be the last video I do. So this has got clear coats on it. Everything's looking good. What I'm going to do is sand this back Probably with 400 after I just give you know the edge a good looking over I might put another coat just on the edge so you can see that lip still a little bit but I don't mind that the lip is visible still by the lip uh, I can't really point because I'm using two hands already <laughs> um, but I think you see it there the edge um, hopefully if I can sand that out with 400, then all is good. If not, I'll just put another coat on. And 
and uh, then I'm going to just spray this with satin. So I'll sand that back with 400 and then I'll sand the whole thing with 600 and then just apply the satin finish and that will actually make it about half as many coats as I would normally put on for gloss. Um, there I am. So it looks good. You can see the fingerboard extension tape. And I didn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but I, I sprayed the inside before I glued the top on. You can't really see inside. I only did that transverse brace there, but the the rest of the top, like the main, uh, actually it was from the above the bottom of the sound hole is all gold and below the sound hole is just wood on the inside. Um, so just when you look through the side port, it'll look all gold and the the um, label is also gold, or written in gold pen. So that is it. That's my uh, exploration into gold. <laughs> uh, final thoughts. Uh, that can did a good job. Um, it was a little bit, or it appeared a little bit streaky on the back, which is the first thing I did, but I can't see any evidence of what I was looking at before that showed up as streaks. Um, so yeah, it's good. You just gotta, like I'm spraying in the middle of summer, July um, 10th and uh, in the US. And uh, so you just gotta, you know, make sure that you're not spraying out in the sun where it's hot, it's much cooler in my garage because I've got these um, insulating things in. Um, and just let it flow. Don't spray it on dry. Just keep it, you know, at least 12 inches away and definitely absolute must is to heat it up. And you don't need my, you know, $150 um, hot high glue brass pot. Um, just some really hot tap water does the trick. Keep it in there for 10 minutes or so. And uh, just shake it around, make that little metal ball thing in there, sort of mix up the paint and distribute the heat a bit more. So that's it. Thank you very much. Bye. Please subscribe. <laughs>